NASA plans to use SpaceX's Starship to carry astronauts to the moon. But Starship isn't just a lunar lander. It's designed as a full-on interplanetary spacecraft capable of traveling to Mars and even beyond. So what will this vehicle actually be inside a vehicle like this? Interplanetary travel isn't just about having a powerful rocket to escape Earth's gravity. It also means creating a space hotel that can keep astronauts healthy for months at a time. On long missions, the crew has to deal with a lot, staying fit in zero gravity, protecting themselves from cosmic radiation, eating well, getting good sleep, staying mentally healthy, and having space to do science and everyday work. Starship is designed with this in mind. In the future, it could carry up to 100 people, something a traditional capsule could never handle. To fit such a large crew, the ship needs a huge interior with multiple levels. Each would serve a different purpose, technical systems on one, exercise areas on another, plus private cabins for rest, common spaces, and big windows for viewing the stars and planets outside. So, starting at the very top of Starship, you have the flight deck. This is where the pilots and flight crew stay during launch, landing, and any major maneuvers. Using large control screens, they can monitor and manage the entire spacecraft. SpaceX has shown concept images of this area in their official HLS, Human Landing System, updates. The flight deck can be designed to fit around 10 crew seats and 5 display-slash-control screens, similar to Crew Dragon's layout, but scaled up for the much larger space. Because Starship has more room, this deck can also feature a big viewing window with an internal shield to protect against radiation and space debris. The seats would likely be rotating seats. These would let the crew face upward for vertical takeoff and rotate to face forward during re-entry, so everyone is aligned in the correct direction for each flight phase. A central core runs through the middle of the ship, allowing crew members to move between decks. Depending on future Starship versions, this core could be extended if internal tanks are moved or redesigned. Elon Musk has also talked about adding a huge observation window at the front of Starship, basically a giant stained glass window to space. It would let astronauts look out at the stars, Earth as a tiny blue dot, or Mars growing larger as they approach. But the window isn't just for amazing views. Right next to this observation window is the commander's station, complete with controls and navigation systems similar to an airplane cockpit. Most of the time, Starship will fly autonomously, but during docking, Mars approach maneuvers, or unexpected situations, the crew must be able to take manual control. The panoramic view from the window will make that easier. For example, during a Mars landing, the commander would be able to see the surface directly with their own eyes. The next deck is used for meeting, dining, socializing, and enjoying the view. This hall is the social heart of the Starship, designed to be multifunctional so the entire crew can gather in one shared space. The level is dedicated to food preparation, dining, food storage, social activities, and crew briefings. It's accessed through the central core, which in this design has two hatches. That allows sections of the deck to be partitioned when needed, and also gives the crew a clear line of sight through the hatches, which helps make the area feel more open. Food is something no human can go without, and on a journey lasting several months, it's not enough to simply pack supplies. You also have to think about how food will be prepared and eaten in zero gravity. For that reason, this deck includes a galley and a shared dining space. The kitchen module has appliances for heating and cooking meals, systems for regenerating and rehydrating dried space food, and specialized containers for storing supplies. Dining in space is very different from eating on Earth. Without gravity, a plate can't simply be placed on a table because it will drift away. Despite the challenges, shared meals play a major psychological role. When the whole crew gathers to eat, it strengthens morale, relieves stress, and reinforces the sense of being a team. ESA psychologists have noted that enjoying special meals together is an excellent way to keep spirits high. For a moment, astronauts can put aside the demands of the mission and feel like ordinary people sharing dinner. Some space agencies understand this importance very well. On China's Tiangong Space Station, astronauts enjoy a wide variety of real foods, from chicken wings to ribs, cooked with a space-rated oven or microwave, not just meals squeezed from sealed packets. Food also creates waste, and dealing with it in space requires careful planning. Packaging, used containers, and leftover scraps can't be thrown overboard. 
The ship needs systems for waste handling and compact storage. Some waste can be compressed and saved until the crew returns to Earth, while other materials can be recycled or incinerated in a dedicated module to produce water or carbon dioxide for technical purposes. The galley also includes a sink and basic cleaning equipment, since crumbs and liquid droplets can float freely in zero gravity and must be controlled to keep the environment clean. To maximize usable space and maintain good circulation in both positive and zero gravity, this deck places most of its functional equipment and storage units along the windward side of the ship. That leaves room for a larger viewing window on the opposite side and helps create a central hub-like atmosphere. The storage units contain short-term food supplies, which can be replenished from long-term stores elsewhere in the vehicle. The vertical access ladder in the central core doubles as a cargo lift, allowing supplies and equipment to be moved between decks. This makes it easier to restock short-term provisions or transport tools for maintenance from one level to another. Next is the crew quarters. Each crew member needs a personal space where they can sleep, relax, and just be alone for a while. Now imagine a ship carrying dozens of people. The Starship concept even talks about up to 100 passengers. How do you fit that many people comfortably? To fit that many pods, the interior has to be extremely efficient while still being comfortable and flexible, allowing personal refuge as well as a decent environment for working in isolation. Of course, the first expeditions to Mars will be far less crowded, so they won't need nearly that many rooms. For smaller crews, the interior can be much simpler. Just a few modular cabins, or even an open sleeping area where people use sleeping bags attached to the walls, much like what's done on the ISS. On the International Space Station, each astronaut sleeps in a sleeping bag fixed to the wall inside a small, individual capsule. The same idea works for an interplanetary spacecraft, because in zero gravity, you don't need full beds or large rooms. Even a small compartment with a sleeping bag and a curtain can offer enough comfort for resting. What matters most is privacy and the ability to sleep properly, which is crucial for psychological well-being during a long mission. The central core is also enlarged to support a crew of up to 15 during short-term sheltering, such as during a solar radiation event. The bulkhead storage in this core provides additional mission supplies, emergency equipment, and backup life support systems. Of course, one space you absolutely need for any long stay in space is a gym. Without Earth's gravity, both bone and muscle start to atrophy. They shrink and weaken. Scientists understood early on that regular exercise is essential for keeping astronauts healthy, just as it is on Earth. Weightlessness simply has a harmful effect on the human body, and without daily workouts, strength and bone density decline quickly. That's why astronauts on the ISS exercise for about two hours a day, and a similar routine is expected for interplanetary crews. Some of the equipment will be mounted on the walls or even the ceiling, since in zero gravity, up and down don't really matter, and you can use every surface of the room effectively. There are plenty of options when it comes to workout gear. In the early days of spaceflight, exercise was basically limited to elastic bands, but the hardware has become much more advanced. Today's setup includes the A-RED weightlifting system, the T2 second-generation treadmill, and the Sevis cycling machine. Research is ongoing to refine both the equipment and the training programs, and crew members still average roughly two hours of exercise per day. The equipment itself matters, but how it's used matters just as much. Earlier exercise routines involved long, low-intensity workouts, slow treadmill runs, and resistance training with light loads. Even with as much as 10 hours of exercise a week, astronauts still lost muscle mass and bone density. Over time, Evidence showed that high-intensity, low-volume exercise works far better on Earth, and likely in space, too. Future missions might even rely on a single device that handles both aerobic and resistance training, which would mean shorter workouts so everyone gets a turn. Higher-intensity sessions could make up for that, helping maintain fitness even with limited equipment. Having enough storage is essential for long-duration missions. Since there's no option to resupply, a Starship-style vehicle would need to bring everything the crew might need for the entire journey. Surface access and spacewalks would be handled through a large cargo airlock. With a built-in cargo lift, the crew could move equipment and supplies safely to and from the surface. The extravehicular activity EVA, level is split into two main sections a storage bay, and an EVA airlock that connects to an extendable lift system for surface operations. 
Along the outer edge of the EVA area, there are XEMU-style exploration spacesuits, each with its own independent suit port airlock. Additional backup suits would be kept in storage for replacements or extra crew members. Next to the suit access points are two sample decontamination and storage units, accessible from both sides of the airlock, allowing astronauts to safely deposit scientific samples or experiments. Both airlock doors are the same size, making it easy to move large equipment in and out. The extendable lift system can reach beyond the ship and lower all the way to the surface. In another possible design, the airlock and lift could be lengthened to hold a six-person rover. NASA aims to send Starship to the moon, and SpaceX ultimately wants to push onward to Mars. Yet the truth is that even within our own solar system, vast frontiers remain unexplored despite decades of probes and dozens of robotic missions. Scientists dream of launching truly heavy spacecraft, packed with advanced instruments, robust radiation shielding, ample propellant, and long-lived power sources like RTGs, to destinations as challenging as Mercury or as distant as Uranus. The Cassini-Huygens mission, which delivered a lander to Titan and orbited Saturn for more than 13 years, had a total mass of about 5.7 tons. It was a landmark achievement, but its scale was limited by the launch systems of its era. Starship, with its immense payload capacity, changes that equation. It would allow us to build larger, more capable probes that carry richer scientific suites, faster propulsion systems, and greater autonomy. Beyond serving human exploration, Starship could become a transformative booster for robotic exploration throughout the solar system, cutting travel times on high-energy trajectories or delivering unprecedented payloads to distant worlds. In that role, it would live up to its name, a true Starship enabling a new era of discovery.